William Haig. Mr. Speaker, uh, may I, Mr. Speaker, may I thank the Prime Minister for his good wishes to my right honourable friend and his family, which I will convey to him. It's probably the first time in history at Question Time that all three parties have been represented by a stand-in for the real leader. <laughs> Does the Prime Minister agree with his former Home Secretary that there was a deep reluctance to act on the information coming out of Abu Hamza's own mouth? No, I don't agree that there was a reluctance on the part of the services to act. But what I think is important to realise is that the services themselves felt that it was only when they raided the home of Abu Hamza in May 2004 that they had the sufficient evidence under existing law to prosecute with success and that is of course their decision. But the very point I would make to the right honourable gentleman and to his honourable friends who've been saying why wasn't action taken earlier, it's precisely because we want to take action earlier that we need the legislation before the House. And with the greatest of respect to the right honourable gentleman, I hope he understands that what he and his colleagues will be voting for today will significantly dilute and weaken the measures attacking glorification that are absolutely vital if we're to defend this country successfully against the likes of Abu Hamza. Mr Speaker, wouldn't it be better to have a watertight law designed to catch the guilty rather than a press release law designed to catch the headlines? The Home, the home, the home, the home Secretary said this morning the home Secretary said this morning on the radio that he wanted to deal with those who seek to exalt terrorism for the reason of trying to get young men to behave in an unacceptable way. The House of Lords amendment, which we support, says that we should create an offence of describing terrorism in such a way that the listener will infer that he should emulate it. So why is the Prime Minister continuing to posture on this when he could have cross-party agreement in accordance with the wishes of the Home Secretary? Uh, uh, let me go straight to the substance of this issue and explain why I disagree profoundly with what the Right Honourable Gentleman is saying. First of all, if we take out the words glorification, we are sending a massive counterproductive signal. It, it is a word I think that members of the public readily know and understand and juries would understand. It is in the United Nations resolution and it is to send completely the wrong signal to take it out. However, there is another point and he touched upon it. And let me just explain why I disagree so strongly with the position the Conservatives and the Liberal Democrats have got. He mentioned the terms of the clause that he is supporting, which is about the listener. The very point about that is that it does not cover, therefore, written statements or images. Now, if that is the case, in other words, it may deal with a sermon, but not with a placard. I find it incredible, I have to say, that at this moment, after what has happened in these last few weeks, that we are going to dilute the law proposed in that way. And as for political press releases, let me just tell him, he's been writing in the news of the world over these past uh, few months, perfectly understandably, his basic case there has been that the government's not been tough enough. Indeed, let me quote what he said just a short time ago. Tony Blair is always telling us to be strong in the war on terror, but there's no point being tough the world over if we can't arrest people in our own backyard. That's, yeah, 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 yeah. That's what he says. That's what he says when talking to the news of the world. What he's voting for today is precisely the opposite. What kind of message does it send when someone like Abu Hamza is at liberty to encourage murder and racial hatred for years on end, as happened under this government? What kind of message does it send when he wants to send signals when people are on the streets two weeks ago inciting violence and murder and no one has yet been arrested? So the, the, the government has let Abu Hamza preach hatred for seven years but arrest people who heckle the Foreign Secretary at the Labour Party conference. 
There are old powers that he won't use, and there are new powers that we have seen abused. And it is the opinion of all decent lawyers, he should ask one, he's probably got one at home, uh, that the... that the, state, that the House of Lords amendment, the amendment that we uh, support, covers more than written statements, and that should be able to put his mind at rest. Isn't it the case that the proper enforcement of existing laws and the careful consideration of new ones would be better than this brand of ineffective authoritarianism? I'm sorry, but as ever with them, the jokes are good, but the judgment not so. And let me explain to him exactly why what he's saying is wrong. The words that he uses in the amendment he's supporting, and the Liberal Democrats are supporting, and I hope his honourable friends realise this, refers to listener. That does not, therefore, mean that it covers images or placards or written statements. Therefore, to support what he is doing will significantly weaken our ability to prosecute the very people that he was on television complaining about a couple of weeks ago. And let me point out that's not all that they've done to weaken the legislation. They are also changing the test so it is not, as we say, an offence being committed if the public could reasonably be inspected to infer. It is would infer. In other words, he's imposing on the prosecution a subjective test, which is harder to do. Furthermore, he is taking out, and so are the Liberal Democrats and all the Conservatives who will vote for this, any reference to glorification in the prescribed groups. That will significantly weaken our ability to prescribe groups that are glorifying terrorism. And, well, I'm afraid honourable members are going to have to understand that when we take out any reference to glorification in this statute today, people outside will infer, I'm afraid, that we have decided to dilute our law at the very moment when we should be strengthening it and sending a united signal that we're not going to tolerate those who glorify terrorism in our country. Yeah.